great uh, so now we have seen this so let us say now you find that with two stage ota the uh, dc gain you get is not good enough right so what could you do i mean if you think we started with a single stage we saw that for driving a resistive load single stage was not giving sufficient gain ha huh? so you have something like this yeah then you don't even have to do this right that's what someone asked last class also i mean you are saying it's something like this right yeah. if this is like this you don't even have to do anything right it's already compensated yeah, actually, yeah. if it's like this i mean your question is p1 is here and p2 is here omega u is here yeah. then you don't even have to do anything it's well stable okay so the question i was asking is uh, i mean we started with single stage for a resistive load we found single stage is not good enough so we put two stage now after putting two, two stages i am finding that the gain is not good enough what do you do you can basically cascade again like a railway train you can keep adding more coaches so if i do that now we'll have basically uh, three stages so how many poles ha huh? three poles so again we'll have to compensate this so we know two techniques miller and feed forward we can actually use the same and one way to arrive at a three stage uh, miller compensated ota is the following so let's start with a two stage ota wait right, let me just draw the two stage ones gl prime and cl prime and then you add cc here this was your normal right and of course you can add the zero cancelling resistor i am not showing it for simplicity okay so now i want to make this into a three stage ota so to make it a three stage i can replace this guy by by another two stage ota right and i know two stage ota again has to be compensated so you replace it by a two stage miller compensated ota that's all so it's basically recursion that you have you would have learnt in programming right the same logic you just keep adding things recursively so this is the first stage gm1 now the second stage is another two stage miller ota so i'll draw it like this right okay so the blue part is basically this the second stage is what is this now this has to be compensated so we again go and put okay it's just the same thing whatever was there in blue is replaced by a two stage miller ot that's all now the uh, stability conditions for this is uh, slightly more involved so we'll try to just get a qualitative feel for how you should uh, be designing this in practice and for that let's actually revisit the stability condition in a two stage ota so for uh, this two stage miller ota for getting a good phase margin what was it that we saw what should you do the second pole should be greater than omega u right second pole must be greater than omega u and approximately what is the location of second pole gm2 by cl right cl prime cl it's also hmm? so now uh, let's re uh, look at this at a different angle so let us say i look only at the second stage i just take only the second stage so this is a first order system what is the unity gain frequency of this first order system ha huh? again first order system it's dc gain times the pole dc gain is pole is 
So what is the unity gain frequency? Right. So that's basically this. Okay. So this is basically the uh, unity gain frequency of the inner stage. Inner stage, I mean this guy. Fine. And this is basically, I will say, omega u for the outer stage. So omega u for the inner stage must be greater than the omega u for this outer stage. Seems like that is the principle that we are using. That should also uh, logically make sense because remember that uh, the reason for using this guy is to, I mean, we, we are putting this capacitor here thinking that we are getting Miller effect. That is assuming that this is providing a good DC gain, right? So which means this guy should not, if I just look at the second states, we should be operating somewhere here for the second stage. Is that clear? I mean, basically, if I plot the second stage frequency response alone, something like this, it goes to unity at gm2 by cl prime, right? I want to exploit Miller effect, which means this should provide a good gain. So when my when I'm having the first pole, yeah, it should be somewhere here. Okay. So the second state should be faster than your overall omega u. I mean, this should behave like a good op amp in the first place. Only then this overall thing will act like a good compensated op amp. Right? So this has to be much faster than your overall thing. Okay. That is one way to look at it. Other ways, like I told, the condition is the uh, unity gain frequency for the inner stage. That is basically the speed of the inner stage must be greater than the speed of the outer stage. Fine. Now we can keep using that logic to see what is the condition here. So I'll just qualitatively write. For stability, let's look at the innermost stage. This is the innermost stage. What is the omega u for this innermost stage? So gm3 by cl prime. The inner stage has to be faster. So this must be greater than omega u for this outer stage. And if you look at this, this is a two stage Miller OTA. What is the omega u for this? GM2 by CC2. Correct, correct. It is, it should provide the DC gain. That's the main idea. But it also has frequency dependence. So you make sure that when uh, around the unity gain frequency and when you are first pole. Yeah, that's all. So uh, we saw that this must be greater than omega u of this. And that in turn must be greater than the outermost stage. What is the uh, omega u for the outermost stage? Gm1 by? That's all. So this is typically the condition you should have to ensure stability. But of course, uh, how much this is away from this and this, that will decide the exact phase margin. That is slightly involved. Let's not worry about that. Huh. So, so mm -hmm. Here, correct. Yeah. Huh? But for the oh, here, okay, check right. I just want an overall inversion from here to here. Right? From here to here, is there an inversion? Yeah, because uh, this is positive, but this is giving negative gain. See, uh, always note that this guy must be negative feedback. The capacitor CC must be negative feedback, right? So this has to be negative. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both of these can, both of these guys can be a common source here, right? Because it takes in one input, one output. But of course, here it's a plus sign, so you should be careful. You have to put. One more stage, whatever you have to see, right? But at a block level, it's like this. You can use a white transistor OT also. Okay, so again, anytime you come up with something new, what should you do first? Yeah, name it. So this is, without any doubt, called the nested Miller compensation. 
just like you have nested for loop blah 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 same thing so uh, this is about three stage miller ota now similarly since we also know feed forward compensation you can also make a three stage feed forward ota so i can copy that and start maybe so again the logic is the same you have a two stage ota which is feed forward compensated so here you replace the second stage by another two stage feed forward compensated ota right so then you'll have something like this this is the first stage second stage is a two stage feed forward op amp so that i'll draw it like this so okay the second stage is another feed forward op amp and you need to add this guy around this so i'll put it up so that i have space I have made sure that all the signs are such that the zeros are added in the left top plane. Okay, you can verify that. Hopefully, it's correct. So again, the uh, even if you think about it, a three-stage op amp has three poles, right? So you want to do feed forward compensation. So how many left top plane zeros you should add? You should add two. So you should have two feed forward paths. One. And Right. Again, the logic is same. We have three parts, so this will be very slow, but very accurate. To make it faster, you are first adding a slightly faster path here. That alone is not good enough. We add one more path. Here. So, if we qualitatively sketch the Bode plot quickly, just the magnitude alone, I'll have one, two. Oops. I didn't want to draw a circle. Okay, three poles, and then I will have two zeros. So let us say one. So now it should be uh, easy to understand. So before omega u, if I have n p poles, how many zeros I should add before omega u? then overall around omega u it will behave like a first order system you are okay again huh it can yeah yeah it can be anywhere but i am just giving a qualitative sketch right? make a question i mean again if i were to give you the same uh, lime analogy i give again we have lot of uh, naughty kids if you have two kids maybe one adult is enough to keep them in line If you have three kids, one guy might not be enough to keep them in line. You need you need at least two people. Same thing. Okay. Cool. So okay, just running a lot of time. So just a couple of minor points. Hopefully we'll have time later. So now let us say. Okay, I think one other thing you can do is the following here. See here, uh, to get a three-stage op amp, I replace second stage. by a two stage feed forward compensated op amp but do you also know any other two stage compensated op amp so basically instead of this you can add miller compensation also okay so i'll just quickly show again this is all now up to you depending on your requirements you can keep adding this this is also fine no no the thing is this is well compensated this is like a first order system for you the act of putting this splits the two poles far apart so this overall behaves like a decent first order system okay so then uh, typically one path might be enough but again if that is not enough you can add another feed forward path here i mean 
now you can add lot of things right in practice people will do both right once you know the two techniques you can keep you know like using multiple combinations of them cool so i just wanted to discuss uh, one other point i'm just running short of time mm. okay let us say i take this uh, miller op amp itself see here i kind of considered parasitic capacitors at almost all the nodes but i didn't consider parasitic capacitor at one node which node is that huh? how many nodes are there here of course let's say assume this is ground for simplicity how many nodes what about this guy right so that is also a node you will also have parasitic capacitor here right but if you connect it in unity feedback like this this capacitor will get lump to this it is okay but let us say now i show the op amp alone directly this is the two stage miller op amp so instead of putting in unity feedback if you have a resistive feedback like this now if you have a parasitic capacitor here now that will add an additional pole so this could potentially degrade your phase margin right so uh, again if you think about it this is adding an additional pole which means a delay is getting added now uh, one way is you can take this into account when, while designing and then try to design or let us say uh, you want to do a fast i mean quick uh, you know like patch patchwork is there something you can do here let's say the op amp inside i can't touch it now okay i put it in resistive feedback i find that this capacitor here introduces a pole in other words it's adding a delay right so is there something i can do to counter this delay where this is not this is i mean basically this is this guy ha ah, how how will that help let he suggesting you put a capacitor here why will this help okay then negative let me add a capacitor here i mean if you add a capacitor what will happen now huh uh, actually i mean he has a point see if you think about it when i had this guy okay or i'll draw that feedback network alone uh, r2 when i didn't consider the capacitor this is let us say v1 and v2 only the feedback how will the frequency response of this guy look like ha huh? straight line it what is the value from v1 to v2 right fine now if i add a capacitor here what will happen no no this is not uh, this is frequency response mind you i mean is it clear i mean what i'm plotting here is basically the frequency response if capacitor is not there there is no dependence on frequency the transfer function is always uh, yeah r2 by r1 plus r2 now if i have the capacitor how will the transfer function change you will have a pole somewhere that you can work out so let us say after some high frequency it kind of drops like this right which one R one by I didn't understand. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. R one by R one plus R two. Right. Voltage is taken across R one. Right. Yeah. So at high frequencies, it when this is a problem, and uh, this is actually happening because at low frequencies, we have the uh, voltage division happening between two resistors. Right. At high frequencies, the voltage division is happening between. R2 and capacitor, and the capacitor is presenting a very low impedance at high frequency, so it drops. Now, is there something you can do so that even at high frequencies, we have the voltage division happening between two similar elements? Yeah, like you told, you can add a capacitor here. Let us say 
if this is ci and this is some cf now what will happen at high frequencies at infinite frequencies what will be the uh, transfer function at very large frequencies you have cf and ci alone in the circuit it's a capacitive division what will be the div uh, division ratio fine so basically it can do something or somewhere here depending on the ratio okay right and that kind of helps you right and if you think about it uh oops yeah if i do this what's happening here let me just take one case something like this here we have a pole and what is making it flat here and it should also be clear because this capacitor is adding a fast path at high frequencies you basically saw that if you just have r2 the division was happening between r2 and ci and that is a very low uh, slow path right but if you add the capacitor the capacitor will react to fast changes and that is adding that zero right so that uh, this is one way in which you can counter this and uh, in particular if let us say r2 is some alpha times r1 and i choose uh, cf to be ci by alpha what will happen ha ah, i mean uh, this ratio what will it become so it will be 1 by 1 plus alpha what will happen to this high frequency ratio that will also be 1 by 1 plus alpha so it will basically do this so what do you think happens to the pole and zero yeah they exactly fall on top of each other they get cancelled again this is that unobservable state but again so this is something you can do to make sure that uh, because of this parasitic capacitor the phase margin degradation is not so critical the idea is again uh, to counter the delay you add a fast path somewhere okay. and uh, related thing so uh, in your simulation when you are actually simulating the loop gain this will present an issue because now if you are doing something like this to find the phase margin you have to plot the loop gain which means you have to break the loop somewhere now if you break the loop here you might not include the gear capacitance here right so breaking the loop is not trivial there is a lot of people have done lot of uh, work on this and there are multiple ways in which you can uh, estimate the loop gain in cadence uh, people have come up with some proprietary techniques and uh, in cadence you run what is called stb analysis i'll probably share some documents later there uh, you instantiate something called an i probe okay. so you put that i probe anywhere in the loop it will take care of all the loading effects it will give you the loop gain you don't have to worry about where should i break the loop what happens to the uh, parasitic capacitor there parasitic resistor there etc you just put it it will work okay but the point i want to make is it is not as trivial as we break loop in a ideal negative feedback like this right if we have something like this without worrying anything we could break the loop either here 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 anywhere but in real life everything will be loading everything so if you ignore the effect of loading whatever you measure might not be the true loop gain you will get a phase margin but that might not be the true indicator of the closed loop behavior but at least in cadence you don't have to worry you can instantiate it this and you will be fine yeah 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 you should be careful that is why typically right you make sure that you break the loop where the impedance is not there at all see for example if i break the uh, this question is now how do you analyze the loop gain on paper so that's where you have to be smart now if i try to break the loop at the output of the op amp right that is a disaster isn't it now this resistor is not coming here because uh, the point where you are breaking the loop that has lot of things 
if you break the loop at some point where there is virtually no impedance or very high impedance point you don't have to worry about loading so typically that's why you prefer to break at the gate of the op amp but then you have to take into account the gate capacitance that's all you don't have to worry about the resistance there only the gate capacitance that you have to uh, take into account while doing this so then you have to do this while you are breaking the loop you add the gate capacitance explicitly yourself right and then you can apply a test voltage here and see what comes here yeah The, the, you have to explicitly add it here. I, I understand the question. Here, I mean, here if you do it, you are basically going to apply a test voltage here. That's not going to affect, right? See, what you are going to do is apply a test voltage. If I were to follow the color coding, I apply a test voltage here. I apply it at the input of this guy. This is what I am doing and finding what comes here, right? So to take the effect of capacitor, you have to add it here, isn't it? If I add it here, it's not relevant. So when you are calculating, you should be careful. But in simulation, in at least in cadence, you don't have to worry so much. Cool. So yeah, 